everyone to the EU Open Source Policy Summit 2023. I am very happy to see all of you here and many more online. Um, my name is Paula Grzegorzewska and I am OFE Strategic Partnerships Director. Um, and today I will serve as a master of ceremonies, but also as a strict time enforcer. And I have already failed at my mission because we are starting five minutes later, but it's perfectly fine. Um, this is the first summit in three years that we are organizing in person. Uh, and each fully... <laughs> Each fully online edition of our summit gathered over a thousand participants from all around the world. And this made us realize even more that the challenges that we are all facing in the digital world are quite similar across geographies, across the organizations. But this is not the theme of this year's summit, this is the theme of the last year's summit. This year we are a bit more on the positive and future looking note and we are going to talk about open source opportunities. But I will leave these discussions to our speakers today. We have a great lineup. And of course, a special thank you to our gold sponsors, the Eclipse Foundation, Red Hat, and GitHub, and our silver sponsors, Dataport, IBM, Open Exchange, Open Invention Network, and Element Matrix. Omid Your Network has kindly supported us with the breakfast today in Brussels, just as IEEE ESA has sponsored the lunch. And if you join us in person, make sure to stay till the end for the cocktail sponsored by Rocket Chat. Finally, <laughs> thank you to all of you who make up this vibrant open source community. Now you can make a round of applause to yourselves. Um, I hope you will enjoy all of the discussions. When you share stuff on social media about the summit, please tag us and use the hashtag EU open source. Uh, and don't shy away from asking questions to the OFE team, both on site and online. We are checking everything. Uh, and before we get into the different opportunities and plenty of questions um, that we have shaped the sessions around, I would like to invite on stage our executive director, Astor Numelin Karberg. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Paula. I'm very excited to see so many old new friends gathering in Brussels again after all the years apart. And hello to everyone joining us online uh, from, yeah, like Paula said, all corners of the world. There's quite some interest in these questions. So I want to thank all of you for your support um, and encouragement in making this conference possible. The EU Open Source Policy Summit is a result of a large number of participants and supporters and just partners coming together and we do all of this to push ourselves um, to think longer and harder uh, about how to realize the many opportunities that open source can bring to uh, not just, just Europe, but the world. So OFE, together with our partners and supporters, we work to open Europe up for open alternatives. We want to open the concentrated digital markets and uh, we want to use the power of open to make space for inventors, inventions, companies and communities um, to build a new tomorrow. So this means questioning the status quo. And with this, and this comes to the theme of this year's summit, we think that this brings a lot of opportunities to Europe. What opportunities come with a digitized sovereign European industry based on open source? What does the, the future innovation platform for Europe's industry look like? Will our traditional industry dare to collaborate at scale? But it's not just industry. We learned from the collaboration uh, around building the EU COVID passes, um, the largest digital government service in history. What Europe's public sector can do with open source. What can we achieve if we uh, think big and bold in the public sector? What are the opportunities for Europe to define its software security needs and fix them? Can we invest and build a new open source industry for cybersecurity? We have a European industry of open source companies brimming with activity. With the right circumstances, how big could it get? I think we should raise our ambitions, uh, ambition levels across the board. And truth is that we, Europe, um, are challengers in most digital verticals. But the good news is that openness is always in the interest of the challenger. 
closed systems and markets are in the interests of incumbents. We should look to boost our digital markets competitiveness using open source. And from my point of view, this might perhaps be our greatest opportunity. And before we get going with our packed schedule, and for the ones of you who have been to the summit before, you know there's a lot and it's very intense. Um, I would really like to address the policymakers in the audience. I would strongly recommend that you w uh, visit FOSTEM this weekend. Europe's largest open source conference takes place at the ULB campus just a few kilometers away from here. There you will meet the builders of Europe's digital future. They have the tools and the skills to make Europe's open source opportunities a reality. Get to know them. Get to know how things are built. And you should work with them, and they should work with you. But my main reason for standing here is not really to give a long speech. We'll listen to a lot of speeches today. Um, but it's actually to present our first speech, uh, speaker. And just over a month ago, um, the Czech Republic's presidency of the EU Council ended, during which the Czech government showed their leadership when it comes to uh, the policy and politics of open source. But instead of me talking about it, let me welcome on stage Deputy Prime Minister for Digitization of the Czech Republic, Mr. Ivan Bartosz.